guys, it's Katie, and I'm here today with a why I love fantasy. So, as you guys know, I'm doing all these videos about, titled, Why I Love, insert thing here. And my last installment was Why I Love Classics, and so this time I thought I'd do Why I Love Fantasy, because fantasy is arguably, if not my sole favorite genre of everything because it's so vast it's so broad there are so many different subgenres and there are the world building is incredible you can experience an entirely new world an entirely new language and new cultures and histories and there's just so much to explore with fantasy regular genres like history and mythology and religion and everything just combined all into one giant fantasy hodgepodge and it's an alternate reality or based on a historical period and I think part of the reason I love fantasy so much is because of the creativity and the time and the research and the passion that gets put into the works and you guys a few of my favorite series and or uh, fantasy books and there are so many of them that I think I'm just gonna do my like top three because and they're they're fairly mainstream ones so most of you have heard of them before but just explaining my reasoning for picking them I think is kind of an important thing but anyway <laughs> just there's so much that can be done with fantasy it's an escape from reality you sit down you're immersed in a new world it takes you out of the world that you're in now it allows you to escape from your own horrors and go into this exciting epic tale or just just getting to experience all of this really cool stuff I mean looking at my bookshelf here if you can kind of see it in the back every single book on that shelf is a fantasy book maybe and maybe it's just because I grew up with it and it was my first love and most people read fantasy it's something that you can read a couple of many many times and discuss with people and you'll catch things every time you'll get something new out of it every single time you read it and it's just so fun and exciting and I just I love it so it's now time for me to start showing you some of my favorite fantasy books I've talked a lot about these before on my channel but not as in-depth as I'm gonna go probably now so the first series I'm gonna recommend you is Harry Potter and for those of you who don't know what Harry Potter is about, it's about a young boy named Harry and he finds out that he's a wizard and goes off to wizarding school. And the thing about Harry is he's had the most tragic life. His parents were killed by a dark wizard when he was just about a year old and he was not killed. He just walked away with a lightning bolt shaped scar on his forehead. and. This dark wizard, he's, he's still lurking and haunting around. And these books detail Harry's life at Hogwarts, which is the wizarding school he goes to, as well as following Harry's tale in defeating this dark lord and about everything that happens along the way. And Harry Potter is just everything to a lot of people but it's very very special to me um, for a lot of a lot of reasons this was one of the books that really really got me into reading in the first place my mom would read it to me at bedtime she read the first four to me and then I read five through seven by myself and I, I reread these a lot they're one of my comfort series that I can just pick up and read whenever I'm feeling down or having a really bad day and um, I just I relate to these characters and this world and everything in it 
so much. It's, this is so important to me. And um, I love Harry Potter. Harry Potter is a very, very special series to me. And on a random note, this is my signed copy. Got this signed by J.K. Rowling when I was like seven, I think I was. It was right now. So we got the first and then the third are both signed. And that's also really a special memory for me um, that I got to meet her and got to talk to her for a minute or two while she was signing my books. So that's something that I'll remember forever. But yes, if you haven't read Harry Potter, I really, really encourage you to do so because it's one of those series that no matter what age you are, you can enjoy enjoy them. You can get something out of them and there's something that you could pass down to your children um, if you have them and you can enjoy them together. And the world building and the magic are just so fun and so neat and I don't want to go so far as to call it urban fantasy because it's like not. It's a hybrid of some kind. I don't know what to call it. But for that reason, just it's one of those classic fantasy books series and series that you need to read at least once. So that's the first one I'm going to give you. Second one is, well... There are technically a couple of books within this second package that I'm going to give you because it is a series, but it's really not a series. It's more of just a world in general, and that is J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth, just in general. The first one you're going to want to pick up and read is The Hobbit. It is the predecessor to his larger trilogy, The Lord of the Rings, but The Hobbit is... It's, it, this book is very, very special to me. It was written as a children's book. Um, he, J.R. Tolkien wanted to write a, an epic tale solely for Britain. And this is what he came up with. Now, The Hobbit follows a, a hobbit, which is... How do I describe a hobbit? There are small creatures that are you about three four feet tall and they love to eat and have simple lives and they don't like to go on adventures really but this one did and this followed the hobbit named bilbo baggins he's from this place called the shire and his whole life gets upturned when several dwarves and a wizard show up on his doorstep needing his help to take back the this dwarven hall in the mountains and from a dragon named Smaug. And it follows their journey to getting there and what happens along the way and it's just it's a really cute fun tale full of chaos and just hilarity in some ways. And the thing about this book that's so special to me is it was one of the things that really got me into medieval and ancient history and my love of languages and just everything. Tolkien is so special to me because he is such an iconic writer and professor and just person who was a phenomenal writer and just The Hobbit is super important. It is, it's everything to me. The movie, while it doesn't go into a lot of detail because it's meant to be a children's book, it is still definitely worth picking up. And if any of you have ever read Beowulf, which is actually, I have Tolkien's version here. Look at that cover. I love Beowulf. This is such a pretty version. It's not complete, but oh my god. If any of you have ever read Beowulf, this is basically the super fantasy 
with hobbits and Middle Earthy things, it's basically Beowulf in fantasy form. It's a really great book. So I would recommend reading this because it's one of those books you absolutely really should pick up at some point, even if you don't touch The Lord of the Rings, which I'll be talking about shortly. Definitely give The Hobbit a try. Now, The Lord of the Rings... <sighs> the Lord of the Rings is also super important. Also one of those um, books that are classic fantasy that you should really pick up at some point. Follow follows the events from The Hobbit in by about 50 years. I don't remember the time gap, but this follows Bilbo's nephew, Frodo, who is also a hobbit, on his quest to destroy an evil ring. This trilogy is a lot darker, and it's got a lot more detail, and a lot more happens. I mean, it's a trilogy, sort of. It wasn't supposed to be a trilogy. It's actually meant to be read as one giant book. If you guys have ever seen the big, the giant red edition, it's literally the entirety of Lord of the Rings in one. That was his original version. We actually have a copy. It's just in another room. I didn't want to take it off the shelf because it's really heavy. And it includes family trees and things, guys. Like, But anyway, um, the Lord of the Rings follows Frodo on his quest to destroy an evil ring of power. And... You learn more about the ring and its history in one of Tolkien's other books called The Silmarillion, which is this guy. Silmarillion is also really important, but it's really, really difficult and really re it takes a really long time to read. So only read this if you are super mega Tolkien fan and you really want to find out more about his world. I mean... I would recommend it to anyone because it is one of Tolkien's quintessential works, but it's not for everybody. Um, and if you are interested in it but know you couldn't get through the book, I'd highly recommend looking up a summary online or even just like reading a few of the stories in here. But if you want to understand this more, read this <laughs> or any of his other books. I mean, there's just so much Tolkien to read, and they're all so incredibly worth it. But the Lord, of, I would definitely read The Hobbit at some point if you can. The Lord of the Rings, also, I would highly recommend reading at some point. But um, I know that some of his other books are not going to be for everybody. But anyway, if you want to understand more, like the Ring of Power, it was created by this evil dark lord named Sauron. Well, at least in this book, Sauron is the one who had the Ring of Power. It was taken from him and they think he has been destroyed. He's not. He's an evil eyeball. It's a long story. But... Um, Frodo is going on this quest to destroy the ring and basically restore peace to the world. And I can't tell you everything that happens in this book. This book, these are the others. This is the Fellowship of the Rings, the first one. Then we have the Two Towers and the Return of the King. Um, I can't tell you everything that happens because we'll be here for like an hour or more, especially if I'm the one telling you about it. But the thing, so that's The Lord of the Rings. And the last book I'm going to talk to you about today, or series I'm going to talk to you about today, is The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb. Now, this is not the first one in the series at all. It just happens to be the one that I have a physical copy of because my best friend was wonderful enough to get me a signed copy 
of one of her books for my birthday this year and I love her for it because Robin Hobb is incredible and incredibly underrated as an author. I know literally no one that knows of the series except for my best friend and one of my other friends because she they're the ones that got me into this in the first place. <laughs> but The Realm of the Elderlings has 16 books in the entire series as of right now. It may be completely finished. I don't know. I haven't gotten through all of them yet. This is book 14 out of the entire series. I have all of them on my Kindle actually, but this is the one that I have in hard, hard copy. And I hate this cover. I'm sorry. I really hate this cover. Because it, one, it's incredibly whitewashed, and two, it's just, it doesn't tell you anything about the series at all. It's just a really awful cover. But anyway, The Realm of the Elderlings, at least, how do I even begin to describe this series to you? Okay, well, The Realm of the Elderlings is a series, or at least part of a series, that follows the life of a young bastard named Fitz. And it's about his life, the first trilogy is about his life and how he becomes a courtly assassin. And all the chaotic and terrible things that happen to him along the way. And another character that's really important to this series is named The Fool. The Fool is everything to me. He's probably my favorite literary character of all time, or at least one of them. Um, and let's just say there's a lot that happens in the realm of the Elderlings. Um, there, okay, the first trilogy you're going to want to start with is called the Farseer Trilogy, and that follows Fitz's life from his young years to his teenage years. And they're a bit, a bit a bit, just take this lightly, they're a bit lighter in terms of Fitz's tale. The second trilogy is the Live Ship Traders that does not follow Fitz. He's not really in them at all, except for briefly mentioned at points, but it follows a trader family down in another portion of the world called Bingtown and they it's all about live ships so it's literally what they say they are ships sailing ships that come that the head comes alive and basically can talk and they're just it's a really phenomenal series if you don't want to get involved in Fitz's tale but you want to read some Robin Hobb I would highly recommend starting with the live ship trader series because they are it's so phenomenal. It's so well written. It's everything. I just, I can't, I really struggle talking about this series because it is so incredibly detailed. It's, there's just so much to it. And it's so entwined that to pull it apart and unravel it and try and talk about it in a coherent manner without spoiling so much is very difficult. <laughs> but the third trilogy is called the Tawny Man Trilogy, and once again we're with Fitz and the Fool and more of their adventures. And it involves... Dragons. I mean, dragons are at the core of this series in some way, and it's a fairly unique way of dealing with dragons and things. But anyway, then there's the Quartet, which is the Rainwild Chronicles, and then the final trilogy is the Fitz and the Fool trilogy, which this is the first book of. This is the first in the Fitz and the Fool trilogy. I haven't read it yet. I'm getting ready to start Rain Wilds in a couple of weeks, and I'm super excited to delve into that. The world building for these books are absolutely phenomenal. They're really hard to take in parts because of all of the, the issues that are involved. Like they, they tackle really difficult issues that you don't always see in books, like 
everything from child abandonment to torture and feminism and slavery and anxiety and depression and um, substance abuse, rape, sexual assault, um, PTSD, everything you can think of that is a really difficult issue, they're in these books in some way, shape, or form, and they are handled with finesse. Because one, Robin Hobb is a female author, another reason you should support her, and two, I mean, a lot of people compare these books to Game of Thrones. Don't. They are similar in some ways, but personally, I think Hobb is the better writer. She handles things better. It's not... I would definitely recommend reading this series. I can't recommend it enough. And you I mean, if you guys know me at all, then five seconds on my channel and you've heard me talk about pretty much most of these books, but really this one. It's one of the newer series I've gotten into, and that's part of the reason I talk about it, but also it's it's everything I want in a book. I'm not even kidding. It's, pr it's pretty much got everything I want in a book. There is a queer character in here, guys. And, like, I know that's not, might not sound like it would be a big deal for you guys, but this series started coming out in the mid-90s, like 1995, 1996. And the fact that she included a queer character that early on is pretty cool to me. And just please read these books. I want more people to talk to them about with. And I just love them. They're, But as I said, they're really difficult to take in a lot of ways because the thing about Robin Hobb is she makes you fall in love with with all of her characters and then she does all of these awful things to them and it just it tears you up inside in every way that you can be torn up I mean, the realm of the elderlings is very important and i think a lot of people would really enjoy it if they were to read it but you have to read it in the order that i told you to read it in because you will be lost otherwise and you really don't want to be lost. It's so, it's such a rich series. It's so, so well written, so detailed, so tragically beautiful. And I really can't recommend them enough. And if you want to talk to me about any of these books really but if you have by some chance read this series and you want to talk to me about it please do so in the comments or on any of the social media links that I posted below but really any of these books I would be so happy to talk to you guys about so feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on any of the social media links that I've posted below, and I'll come back with another video for you guys again sometime soon. Okay, bye!